easily with their classmates. However, sometimes adults had problems coming to terms with their situation. I want you to welcome, please, Connor and Dara Prendergast. You're very welcome, guys. Thank you. Okay. All right. The first question. Two mammies, no daddy. Explain, Connor. Well, it was very simple, really. Uh, our parents met about 27 years ago. Uh, they very much fell in love. This was back in London. Uh, and on the basis of that, and uh, quite a strong relationship, which was going, I think it was about three or four years by the time they decided to have kids, wanting to have kids, and then Vern agreed. And so they, they, they found uh, a man who was willing to All right, to do let's it. just explain oh, yeah. that, that your parents are yeah. two women. They are two women, yeah. Right. They're my mothers, uh, and they're definitely our mothers, and we would count them both as our parents. All right, so they decided they wanted to have children, yeah. and so with uh, artificial insemination, they had you guys. Yep. Um, you have different dads, is that right, Darren? Yeah, um, we, well, Connor, uh, his father was... Um, Bob. Bob. Uh, Thank you, sorry. Yeah. Bob, <laughs> yeah. I don't remember the names. That's how insignificant, really. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it uh, shows nothing. Um, my father was Chris or Tom? I think his name is Chris. Chris. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you clearly do not sort of miss uh, the fact that they were, were not in your lives or anything like that. Oh, not at all. Um, I've grown up with two parents. Like, I'm sure you've had two parents. Most people have two parents, and um, there's some that don't. But um, I've grown up with two loving parents that have built a stable life around me. And, and that was fine? Yeah, no problems. Um, did you know anything at all about Bob and John, or was it Chris? Uh, but you know the guys I mean. Do you, do you know anything about them? Do you want to know anything about them? Well, I, I know that Bob uh, was British. He was a set designer, and that's it. Yeah. Uh, and that's all I really need to know for me. Uh, Dara knows a bit about uh, I know Chris that my John, yeah. Chris John was uh, Indian, where I got my colour from. Yeah. Um, he was a lawyer, and that he had uh, artificially inseminated. He'd been a donor to uh, other young people as well. And do you know any of your half-siblings? Yep. I grew up with um, two of them, uh, my sister and my brother. And to me, they are my sister and my brother. Um, they grew up for about six years, living next door to each other in London. No problem no at problem. all? No. We used to have a door in the back garden. We'd, we'd play with each other yeah. every day. Like. Now, at some point, you must have realised that, it, it, although there are many single-parent families and so on, that, that your situation was a bit different. Did you ever become self-conscious about it at any point in your upbringing? Funnily enough, I don't think we... I don't think we got to a point where we were like, oh look, we're so through school because we, you know, we learnt that not everyone understands that, that we are raised in a perfectly stable environment and that having two mothers is the exact same as having two loving parents. Um, it's yeah, just like when you're young, when, you know, I can see you guys as yeah. young fellas at school and you tell your classmates, I have two mammies. And kind of little boys love their mammies. And the fact that you guys had two, yeah. kind one, of, that was pretty good. One schoolmate of mine in particular, he, I said, um, oh, I've got two mammies. And he said, you don't have a dad. You're so lucky. <laughs> <laughs> so it really shows, you know, that as long as you've got loving parents, it doesn't really so matter. So school was never difficult for you, was it? I had no difficulties. Not that I can remember anyway. Um, I told most people in my class. I told all my people, or all people in my class. And, and how did you tell them? I mean, did you just to explain that, that, that your, your two mammies were actually in love with each other? Or did you just say, we have two mammies, and sort of let people draw their own conclusions? Well, it would depend, really. Um, as we grew up, uh, I suppose, I, anyway, began to sort of fill them in on more detail. As I began to understand it more myself, uh, the process of, of artificial insemination. Um, but, uh, by the time I got to know most people, they would ab absolutely know. Um, what about... Uh, uh, a male role model. I mean, do you think that's important? Did you have uh, important role models in your lives who were male? I think having role models is very important in your life. I had plenty of male role models, and just because I didn't have a father doesn't mean I didn't have role models. There were plenty of parents uh, of my friends. There were plenty of my fa parents' friends as well, and there were plenty of my friends who were an incredible influence on me, and really, uh, they really helped me to grow uh, as a man myself. Um, did you ever have people coming up to you and suggesting that uh, your uh, two mothers had no right to do this, that it was some sort of, you know, an unfairness being visited upon you? I've never actually had anyone say anything bad about it, um, to my face anyway. I'm sure people have said it behind my back, but I've never had it to my face. All right, well, um, the, the two Maz are in the audience. Yes, they are. Uh, Bernie and Anne. Hi, hi hello. Um, tell, tell me about 
and the decision that you made that you wanted to have a family and how difficult that that might have been at the time? Well, even in London at the time, it wasn't something that many people were doing. Um, Anne, though, wanted children really badly. She always wanted them. And it took five years for us to actually agree to go ahead and, and have them. Now, um, you did a kind of a DIY job, didn't you? In terms Asher, yeah. <laughs> yeah to, to, um, without being too graphic, I mean, what exactly did you do? Well, sure, Anne, Anne well, we, we went looking for a friend that would be willing to give us some sperm, and Anne, Anne found somebody who was a friend of a friend who said, OK, I'll give you some sperm. We, we were young, we were 24. <laughs> Just like that. Just like that. <laughs> and she met him, and oh, did he come round to the house? Or? Um... Or did you meet him We somewhere? met up in a friend's house, I think, down the road, in fact. Yeah, yeah. and he just, yeah. he just he went obliged. into the bathroom. And yes, exactly, he obliged. <laughs> 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 well, I hear about people and how difficult it is to conceive and all the rest. And here were you, who presumably knew nothing about artificial insemination. Not at all. I'd have known a bit about it from... I'm a, <laughs> I'm a good Kiwi. <laughs> I've been around dairy farms a bit. <laughs> 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 but also, I, I was a nurse, so I had a... a a fair old idea about that. And, and the, the instrument was... Ah, no, pass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, please. The reason I, I'm fascinated with this, I didn't even know what this was, but it's a, a turkey baster. Isn't it? Uh, well, in, in fact, we used just a, an ordinary um, uh, hospital syringe that, without the needle on it. And but you can, apparently you can use tur turkey basters. I've never actually met a turkey baster in a kitchen. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> no, I'm just thinking that so many people would be trying so hard to conceive. Yeah. And here yeah. are the pair of you, sort of DIY. It's not rocket science. It really isn't. Yeah. We just, yeah, the guy just yeah. did it we in the bathroom into a prayer mug and... You might have chosen to have the same father for, for uh, both of your children, mm. as it happened, two sons. Mm. Uh, that didn't happen. Wh why? It didn't happen. Well, um, the, the donor for, the father for Connor, um, didn't want to do it again because in between doing it for Connor, um, and when we went back to him for the second time to ask him would he do it again, he, um, he had acquired a girlfriend who wouldn't agree <laughs> to him doing it. So that was the end of that. She wanted to have his children. She wanted his that children. That. Uh, she, just in case he ran out. Like, <laughs> like, I don't know. She just, yeah, oh, okay, so, so anyway, you found another willing donor. Yeah. And yeah. so you have two beautiful boys. Yes, we do. Coming back to live in Ireland, was that problematic? Mm, no. Actually, I mean, it was how long before you? Easy. How long before you actually shared with everyone that you weren't just two pals living in a uh, in a house with two Aww. kids? How long before they realised the nature of your relationship? But we would have been made a decision to be tot right from the off to be totally open, because yeah. one of the things that's very damaging for children is hypocrisy in their families. So although it, we were unusual, we made a decision that we were not going to hide it from anybody. And now, not that we were yeah. kind of going round, you know, flaunting it around that we lived in yeah. County Kildare and in the countryside and we, we were careful to get to buy a house in a very nice area um, in the countryside and not in a place where there might have been, I don't know, threats for, you know, in, in some, some of the estates in Dublin. We but in avoided. truth you never had any hassle? We never had any hassle. We told the school, the primary school, the local primary school in the country, um, they were brilliant, the teacher. I mean, they, you know, they hadn't come across uh, this kind of situation before, but they handled, they looked after the children really well, they were really open. It was a small five teacher school. They, they were just fantastic. We no really problems. had no difficulty mm -hmm. at all. Now, I know that uh, the whole matter of civil union is going to be uh, discussed and legislation brought in. I mean, there's a promise of that and what form it will take. Finally, we, we don't know the Law Reform Commission, all that will mm -hmm. have uh, views on it. Um, how do you find your situation today? I mean, do you, are you uncomfortable with the anomalous situation that I'm not sure you gave birth, mm -hmm. um, so you have no problems in terms of who's legally the mother but you have problems Bernie in terms of what your relationship is yeah there there will be we will be able to become civil partners and therefore share you know property and pensions and all the rest of it between each other in the way that married people can now in Ireland we, there would be no right for the children to inherit from me without paying taxes, though they were strangers. Equally, if Anne were to die and I were to get ill, they would have no legal rights 
to um, have any say in my care or have even any information about my care. So those kinds of ordinary situations. Now, I'm not suggesting that they would be prevented from being able to find out about my care by my family or anything. It's yeah. just that in situations where... You'd like, you'd like to have it by, 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 by right yeah. and not by concession, as yes, it were. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So those kinds of things. Yeah. You know, have you ever come across the notion, I, I know you probably saw the movie La Cage au Fall or The Birdcage, right, yes. where two guys and, and the whole suspicion was maybe two gay fellas will have a gay son, you know. Mm. I mean, was there any suggestion that the two boys <laughs> were, I mean, they're laughing there <laughs> at the notion <laughs> that, that because they were raised by, by uh, two gay mm. women that they might turn out to be gay in some way? Uh, that, there, there is that kind of perception, I think, out there among some people. We, nobody's ever said it directly to our faces. But the answer, the obvious answer is we love women, so why would we be bringing up boys to not love women? <laughs> 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 In any event, it's not something. It's not something that people have control over. Uh, no. it's, it's just the the, the way they are, Absolutely. the way their sexuality and, is. And I know the way they they're lucky because if they had turned out to be gay, there were at least two kids in Ireland that wouldn't have a problem coming out to their parents. Okay. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, what, what about it, guys? I mean, did it ever cross your mind? Maybe I'm gay. Well, I, I think, as Bernadette said, uh, we would have had no problems at home because I've had, I've had friends who are, who are gay and who had huge trouble uh, coming out to their parents and just sort of uh, amazing amounts of stress and worry about it. Yeah. And I, in my own mind, I thought, you know, God, if it was me, I, I would be sorted because my parents are, have always been very open, very honest, and very accepting of me and of what I am and who I am. I mean, I'm a heterosexual male, but uh, I know that if I was gay, then I would have had no problems, and mm. I'm sure Darren feels the same yep, way. I've, um, I've grown up with it. Um, I know gay men, like from Burn and Anne, all their friends, and I just don't feel any way attracted to them, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in perfect shape. I'm sure I'm they're very disappointed to hear <laughs> that uh, when next time they come round to the house. What about when you bring girlfriends around to the house? Um, how do they react to the situation? I've never had a problem with uh, bringing girlfriend down to the house. I don't usually do it now. Um, <laughs> because not, I'm not embarrassed about them being lesbians. I'm just embarrassed because they're my parents. <laughs> <laughs> like everyone's embarrassed by their parents. <laughs> uh, uh, um, there's no doubt this is going to become uh, more and more frequent as uh, people, whether by adoption or by uh, donor insemination or whatever, it's yeah. going to become uh, more common. And the fact that you guys are happy to say look absolutely like have a look at us yeah. we don't have horns we're not monsters we we're you know we're, yeah. we're, we're we're normal guys yeah so look thank you both very much uh, for fun. coming on the show connor and dara pendergast thanks thank a you. Bit. okay as i mentioned at the beginning a lot of people on the show tonight who live lives less ordinary but nonetheless as happy as everybody else. Quick reminder of our phone-in prize that will take you and a friend to Cape Town to spend seven nights in the luxurious Hibernian Towers apartments right on the beach. Magnificent views of the ocean. You have 111. Viewers in Northern Ireland can also text 57111 or call 0901 293 0050. Usual terms and conditions apply. You have to be over 18 to enter. Uh, we'll be closing the lines at 11 o'clock, which is in 21 minutes time. And I'll call the winner before the end of tonight's show. If uh, you're not there to take my call you do not get the prize and i will call somebody else so get texting and dialing straight away lots more happening in part three don't go away <laughs>